Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Let's go buy some sushi meat. I'm ready. <laughs> I hope right. you guys are ready. Yeah, get in, brother. We're going to see Fishmonger Reed. I'm, I'm having a, a Fishmonger crush on him. You know? <laughs> uh, don't tell anyone. Uh, we're gonna watch some of his skills, hopefully. Uh, he's going to explain some about uh, fish supplies for chefs, especially how important it is to get fresh fish and how you get fresh fish. So we're gonna get some insight too into the fishing industry um, and some of the good things and probably some of the bad things too. So, come on, yeah! What could go wrong? Are you guys ready to some fish? Yes! <laughs> My head just left the business. <laughs> yeah, run, 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 run. Back in business. Show us your mating fluid. Hello. How much for the night? <laughs> They have the rhino dick pills. They have Kratom from Bali. Like, it's just... Wait, okay, what are rhino dick pills? Uh, for, uh, okay. Let's say if you have a problem like this. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> now I know where to find them. <laughs> from Poland. Yes, I'm Polish, German. I grew up in Germany and they also call me sushi by who? And where, where, I don't know what I'm <laughs> Say that part again. We're here to grab the freshest Floridian seafood from Fishmonger Reef. Have some fun. <laughs> See ya. What's up everyone? We're gonna uh, do a little uh, education with fishmongering and sushi chef. We have Hubeo oh. and we have Reed and we're gonna show you how to absolutely buy fresh fish. What's going on y'all? Welcome in. We're at Gap Plates on Seafood Market. We run our own commercial boat that fishes for our shop daily. Uh, so we've got real deal hours out of the water fish coming in on a daily basis. Uh, most of our fish are caught from small commercial vessels, 20 to 30 foot boats that go out one day and come back in the same day with their catch. But as you know, and maybe you guys don't know, that is not normal at all, no matter what you're told. That is exceptional and not the standard. Question, yeah. do you think this is the future of fishing? I think a lot of people are switching to learning more about where their food is yeah. coming from. And there is a uprising of passion behind fresh and local produced fresh, foods. Yeah. I often say the most important job of a fishmonger is education. Education, yeah. It, education is a fishmonger's first job, everything else, and there's a lot of everything else is secondary. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll show you a couple of fish. Yeah, sweet. Look at that bad boy. So this right here is a golden towel fish. It's one of my favorite fish. Fluffy, white, sweet meat. It's like a lighter textured grouper when they're this size. But you can tell by these crystal clear eyes right here how fresh this fish is. But eye clarity is not the only thing you want to look for. In some cases, it's actually a deceiving sign really? because eyes can cloud up immediately. There's one fish we catch a lot in the Keys in Southeast Florida during summertime, and that's called mangrove snapper. For whatever reason, mangrove snapper buried in ice all day long. The fresh water from being buried in ice will cloud the eyes immediately, even when it's a sub 48 hour out of the water fish. You don't disregard the eyes because clear eyes still means fresh. You yeah. can't fake the clear eyes. But in the case of a, a mangrove snapper, and there are some other species similar to that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not, not fresh. fresh. And the other thing you want to look for Ooh. are those bright red gills. The gills, you can't fake those. That's uh, bright red gills, that's what you need. Yeah. And then, of course, 
pushing on your fish. I recommend anybody that's buying whole fish from the local fishmonger, ask them to see the whole fish that they're buying. Even if you're buying a filet, ask them to see the whole fish. You shouldn't yeah. smell any fishiness from your fish. You can go ahead and smell that fish. Should be zero fishiness well, whatsoever. Almost no scent at all. Yeah, that like, is almost odorless. It smells a little bit like and, the sea and that's it. And then when you push on it, your fish, when you push on them, should have no bounce back. I'm applying quite a bit of yeah. pressure. I'm not being gentle at all. And it's bouncing right back. Yeah. Now I will say, if you're gonna ask the fish monitor to show you a fish and you're gonna be pushing it with any kind of pressure, you should buy that fish. This is my fish, so I can push on it like that. <laughs> so here we have an even softer texture fish, yellowtail snapper. These guys are light, mild, and flaky, and really about as soft as a fish gets. And he's waving at you. His fin is stiff like that, he is in rear mortis. You can hold a fish like this and not flop. You go to a fish house and you hold a fish like this and it bends over, don't buy it. Maybe don't even buy anything they've got because this is a sign of freshness. If it is folding over on my hand, that would be, you know, a less fresh fish. And you can see how crystal clear those eyes are. Yeah, you. We see his little gills. Yeah, so this fish is a great example. The reason why I chose this one next is because the gills aren't always going to be bright red. The yellowtail snapper. Oh yeah, much darker. Are gonna have almost like a burgundy color. Yeah. And, and this fish is right around the 24 hour mark out of the water. Are you guys ready to cut some fish? Yes. 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 <laughs> What kind of fish is this? Ah, shit. Got it on the third reef out. Wow. <laughs> hey, Eric. Mine up your back early. No. Four knives, five Do you prefer softer knives or harder knives? So I do not like stiff knives. Um, well, I mean, every knife has a different purpose. And if I'm... If I'm cutting pieces of sashimi, I want a stiff knife. Um, I don't want it to have any flex or bend. I want it to go exactly where I'm putting it. And when I'm filleting, uh, just about any fish I fillet, um, I use a seven inch fillet knife. Um, my preference is Dexter's uh, Sing Safe Handle. Uh, you can find them on readthefishmonger.com. Um, like it? Yeah, you got to. Yeah, somewhat uh, flexible. Yeah, it, it's it's not a hyperflex. I do not like hyperflex at all, but it's not stiff either. Um, and because when you are cutting your fish, I'll show you a little fish. <laughs> so I'm going to answer your question about stiff versus flexible knife. Um, cutting this fish for you. So we're going to go behind the head at a hard angle. Twist our knife around, tip the knife right that open, slide all the way down the top of the dorsal fin, wipe the scales off, rest your knife right on top of the skeleton and pull towards the head. Now for those steps, a stiff knife would work just fine. For the next steps, not as much. So, you want the tip of our knife at the base of the ribs. Don't want your knife floating, you want it resting on the skeleton. Angle your knife slightly up, so not flat like that, slightly up like that. Move towards the head. That just separated the connection the pin bones make to the ribs. Now you want to put the tip of your knife on the second side, and this is where you need just a little bit of flex to slide down the second side without losing any of the meat. Now you can rest your knife right on top of those rib bones, slide down the rib bones, and there is your flawless snapper flex. Beautiful. If you don't have a clean surface, I always use the skin. There's oh, the filet back sense. on top of. Love it. That's a weird thing in America too, that we're not a big skin eaters. I don't know, we just, it's... Uh, because in America we want our uh, six ounce, no skin, no blood, not to taste like fish. Um, <laughs> but then you get to say you eat fish instead of chicken. Yeah, yeah. So if you were cooking this fish, I would then do a salt water and ice bath on the fish to take off any little scales or imperfections. Uh, you're going to be eating it raw, so I'm not going to leave it dry. And you can play with it, and if you see any scales on there, you can pick them off. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Captain Clay. Good 
yo, yo, yo. We have our bounty. We figured out that while we were talking in there, some of the seafood I have not experienced yet. So we will do that now. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.